Hi, my name is Teresa and you're watching Between Two Wheels. The next couple of videos I'm going to talk about my hands. These hands right here. I'm going to show you some examples of picking things up, of how I do things, how I modify some things, and just a little bit about my life and dealing with primary progressive multiple sclerosis when it comes to my hands. So let me just talk for a second about uh, the journey, those, you know, 16 years that I have been diagnosed and how that the nerve damage that has been affected to my hands. And I can't help but also talk a little bit about you know my arms too because it's my hands and my arms are affected to reach I you know I can only do a reach out so much and so far and you'll see that on some of the the videos that I do some like little demonstrations and things and just give you a more broader uh, view of exactly what I what I can do and I guess with that said, what I can't do as well. But so, yeah, when I was first, the first symptoms, like so, let's say 16, 17, maybe even 18 years ago, was pretty much all lower body. And it was on my left side, my left leg. So when my hands became affected, you know, I'm so bad with dates and things. So I want to say, you know, maybe even... Uh, eight years ago, I was in, I was to the point where I was in the wheelchair way before my hands and even arms were as severely affected as they are now. Yes, I did have some maybe numbness and maybe some tingly feelings in my arms and hands, but nothing of the nothing to the degree that my lower body has and had at that time. So within the past, I'll say, we're going to say like six years, you know, my hands are, a lot of people describe things as, as like tingly, numb, burny uh, sensations. That's a big MS. Those are big words that a lot of people use to de describe something some part of their body with MS. Um, as far as tingly in my hands, I I do a lot in my left hand. I do have some tingly feeling, um, almost that Novocaine feeling when you're coming out of some Novocaine and you just have that tingle. And some numbness that occurs probably from my shoulder blades in my back all the way down my arms. Now, this isn't constant. This isn't an every day, every minute thing. So yes, and when it comes to my my left hand was first really affected because like I said, the whole left side of my body was was the first thing that was affected. So I'll say six years ago, this, I could uh, open this probably to about like this range or something. My right one, I could open it all the way. I could open it like that. Um, and then fast forward, you know, and I get, wait a minute, I would get severe, intense, like, uh, shaking. I still experience some shaking every once in a while. Those, those jolts that I have in my arms and my hands, it's like a little zap. It's like a nerve zap that I have often and it shakes. Um, and then, um, it'll be two years Two years in December, I um, I came down with the case of the shingles. I had the shingles, and the shingles were on my right side. I didn't know, but shingles are usually never on both sides of your body. It picks a side, and I had the shingles. And after that whole shingle experience, this hand, my right hand, which was always my good hand, has been more affected than my left hand. 
So as a result, uh, now my left hand is pretty much kaput. Now, with that said, I can still hold my mouse, you know, rest my mouse on my right hand. And I'll tell you, if, if that's all my right hand can do, I'll take it. And for the most part, you know, that is about it. Um, now, I am constantly working at these hands to keep my muscles strong and my fingers to keep just movement going. Um, you know, and the signals I have noticed in the past few years, the signals to my fingers and to my hands, um, they've slowed. You know, part of MS, I don't know if I've talked about it, but slow reaction time. Um, even when I take a balloon or a ball and bat it back and forth or against a wall or something, my reaction time is different. MS slows, that's the nerves, it slows that reaction time. That's why when I am in a situation where there's any additional stress or I cause stress or, or uh, you know, excitement and things, a lot of times it can just drain me really fast. Uh, and when I go, well, I'll do that in a video, but when I go to shake someone's hand, uh, I practice shaking hands a lot. I practice it here at home. I practice over at the gym. And again, like I can sometimes grip someone's hand to shake their hand, but then the release to actually like release it and let go, that can be even more difficult than the initial going in and doing a nice firm handshake. Um, silly thing out of all the things, and there are a lot of things that I miss or not doing or, or stuff, and to give a nice firm handshake, a handshake means a lot. I miss that handshake. Um, it's crazy what I do. But I do a lot of fist pumps. Uh, I have good, supportive friends, family, know my situation, know when I go out. I, you know, hang a little purse on my wheelchair. And uh, again, you'll see some of this stuff in some previous, in some upcoming videos on, you know, even dealing with money or um, my debit card or holding a menu uh, when water comes to a table um, to put the straw in, in the water. Uh, you know, things that we all take for granted, the littlest things, holding on to a, a, even a, a plastic water bottle. Uh, and then, you know, once you have a hold of it, and then sitting it down and releasing it. Things like this that Opening my front door, I will be showing you a video on how I, how again, how we've modified that um, with my hairbrush. So things like this, it's, it's, I first wanted to explain a little bit about my history on my hands um, when it comes to my primary progressive multiple sclerosis. When I'm, I, you know, my hands would be comfortable in this position all the time. But I, 95% of the time, in con I'm in constantly aware that I can't have my hands in this position. So I open them, set them on my wheelchair or on my legs in an open position on my knees. And um, yeah, anything to keep them open. At night, uh, I used to have a brace that I wore, you know, a, to keep my hands open. Now I have a method where I, you know, I don't move at night. Um, I stay in a fixed position. So I take my hands and can put them underneath my legs or like under my butt cheeks or something just to keep them open all the time. I don't ever want to have my hands end up in this position all the time. So whatever I can do to not have that happen, by darn it, I am going to do it. Thanks again for taking the time and watching these videos, sharing these videos, and just being a part of this journey. Um, again, I'm not doing this for the sympathy, for just the whole thing that I'm not into that. I'm not the feel sorry for me type of person. 
I am doing this to educate people to know more about the, the primary progressive multiple sclerosis that affects 10% of people with multiple sclerosis are under this category of primary progressive. And I'm just doing it to show people. And even if you are labeled, newly labeled or with primary progressive multiple sclerosis, do not let the fear of that long, you know, those long words and that label, don't let that fear uh, take you to places and and um, and thoughts of, oh no, well, what happens when I like end up in a wheelchair or can't use my hands? Don't go there. Just appreciate right here what you can still do and keep doing what you can still do. Don't ever stop. You know, this, this disease would love us to just be dormant and just like, yeah, yeah, I'll take over. I'll, I'll do it. And if you let your mind, if you allow your mind to to think that way, well, then your body is just going to surrender to the fact and just allow MS to win. And I would suggest not doing that. It is my job every day to not let this MS take, take all of me. I refuse, I refuse to let MS do that to me. So, okay, enjoy the videos and have a wonderful day. Toodaloo. Thank you.